Jerry at Fair Oaks. I am. See you later, gang. Okay. Oh, there's Lee. Ted's with him. Hello, Lee. Ted. Well, it didn't take you long to get out of your shower, Jerry. <laughs> no, I guess I did kind of hurry. Well, uh, let's walk on over to the campus. Okay. Jerry, Lee's just had some pretty bad news. Bad news? Golly. Well... What is it, Lee? Well, maybe I'd better tell you, Jerry. Okay. Jerry, Lee's just found out that... Well, he's going to have to leave Fair Oaks. Leave Fair Oaks? Why, you're kidding. You think I'd kid about a thing like that? No. No, I guess you wouldn't. Come on, let's, let's keep on walking. Yeah. Well, what, what's it all about, Lee? Well, maybe Lee doesn't feel like talking about it right now. Oh, yes, yes, I'll talk about it. If I don't, I might do something pretty silly. Well, to begin with, Jerry, you remember when we were out in the outboard boat that day, going over to General Bend? Yeah, yeah, I remember. Well, do you remember that I told you that in more ways than one, you and I were in the same boat? Sure, I remember that. You told me that you're an orphan, too, just like me. Yeah. Well, I don't even remember my mother. She died when I was just a baby, but... Well, Dad really raised me. He was a swell pal, too, but... Well... He died about a year ago. Oh. Uh, let's sit down here under the Davis Oak for a while, huh? Okay. Sure. Ah, the Davis Oak. Hmm. Well, Dad was in the lithographing business. The what? Uh, lithographing business. That's a kind of printing, Jerry. Oh, mm -hmm. It's generally used by circuses and carnivals and for big billboards and that sort of thing. Oh, yeah. I guess the business was pretty successful, too, because we had a nice home in the city and a, a swell place out in the country. Right on the shores of the lake, Angle Lake. We had a speedboat and two or three other boats, some horses. Oh, gee, it was a beautiful place. Was? Well, don't you have it anymore? No. Well, after Dad died, Mr. Thorpe, he was Dad's lawyer. Well, he thought the place at the lake would just be unnecessary expense, so we sold it. Uh -huh. Well, Mr. Thorpe was named in Dad's will as the executor of his estate. An executor, Jerry, is the man who takes care of an estate for the heirs. After a person dies. Yeah, I know. Well, go on, Lee. Mr. Thorpe's a swell fella. Gee, he's treated me like a million. I've always called him Uncle Ross. Ross Thorpe. Uh, that's the lawyer's name, huh? Mm, yeah. And, well, after Mr. Thorpe sold the place at Angle Lake, he told me, if it was all right with me, he'd buy the house in town. He said he'd been looking for a new home, and Mrs. Thorpe had always liked our house, and so... Well, of course, it was all right with me, because I was coming here to Fair Oaks pretty soon anyway. Yeah, sure, it you wouldn't have any use for a big house in the city. No. So Mr. Thorpe bought the house, and that's where he and his wife have been living ever since. Well, of course, one of the parts of the job of an executor of an estate is looking after the business interests of the heirs. And Mr. Thorpe's been managing the plant ever since Dad died. Now, well, what Major Davis had to tell me was that Mr. Thorpe had written to him and told him the business back home was in such terrible shape that... But the estate couldn't stand having me stay here the rest of this year. Golly, that... That's terrible, Lee. Yeah. 
It is terrible. When when do you think you'll leave, Lee? Hmm, you might as well go right away, I guess. And not even finish midterm exams. Oh, why should I finish them? I won't be coming back next term. No, but, well, you'll get your midterm grades, Lee, and they'll be good in whatever school you go to. Jerry's right, Lee. You should stay on the next few days and finish up this midterm anyway. Well, I guess I might as well. That's what Major Davis said, too. Gee, I hate to leave Fair Oaks. This school meant more to me than anything else I've ever known. Except my dad, of course. Lee. Yes, Ted? Remember what that motto says up over the front door of Custis Hall? Sure. Toil is the father of fame. Yeah. Well, that wasn't put up there for the cadets. Just while they're at Fair Oaks, Lee. It means that wherever we go, whatever we do after we leave the academy, it's just as true then. So, wherever you go, that motto means that you should work hard and take advantage of your opportunities, whatever they are, and, and you'll succeed. Oh, you mustn't let leaving here make a difference in your trying hard to succeed. No, I know that, Ted. And thanks for reminding me. Well, I've got a stiff math exam coming up tomorrow. I think I'll go up to the room and bone for it. You coming, Jerry? Huh? Oh, excuse me, Lee. Uh, what'd you say? Well, have you any studying to do? I'm going to bone for my math test tomorrow. Oh, uh, no, not right away. Say, Lee. Yeah? Uh, where are you going after exams are over? Why, I'll go right to the Thorpes, I guess. Uncle Ross told Major Davis that was what I should do. Uh-huh. Okay, uh, uh, where does Mr. Thorpe live? In Mapleton. That's where Dad and I lived. Why? Huh? Oh, oh nothing, Lee, nothing. Uh, you're going to the room and study, huh? Mm-hmm, yeah. Well, uh... I'll see you later. Oh, you're not coming up right away? Uh, no, Lee, not right away. I'll see you later. Uh, you too, Le uh, Dad. Okay, so long, Jerry. So long. Oh, Jerry. Oh, hello, Bruce. Wait up a moment, will you? Sure. Where are you going right now, over to Max? Yeah, I've got something very important to do. Oh, really? Mind if I tag along with you? No, of course not. Come on. My word, at the gate at which you're walking certainly leads me to believe you do have something important on your mind. Yeah. Uh, Bruce. Yes? Uh, Lee just got word from the executor of his dad's estate that he's going to have to leave Fair Oaks. Leave Fair Oaks? Why, you mean for all time? Yep, for good. Why, I don't understand, Jerry. Why? Well, it's something about his estate. Mr. Thorpe, uh, that's the man who was Lee's father's lawyer. Yeah. Well, he told Major Davis to tell Lee he was going to have to leave and go back home that he wouldn't be able to come back to Fair Oaks next term. Oh, that's a shame, isn't it? It sure is. Uh, go ahead, Bruce. Thanks. But I I've got an idea, and I think it's going to work. You mean you have an idea which might allow Lee to come back next term? Yes, sir, I, I think I have. Well, do you mind if I ask what it is? No, I don't mind. But do you mind if I don't tell you? <laughs> You'll find out pretty soon. Well, say, <laughs> you seem rather gay about this whole thing. I am, Bruce. I I'm just tickled that I thought of this idea. Golly, I hope it works. Well, I certainly do, too, if it means that Lee will be able to remain here at school. You know, uh, Lee and I just found out a little while ago that we're both orphans. I mean, each one just found out the other one is. Oh, is that so? The only difference is that, well, Lee's folks have always had lots of money, and mine, well, we're just circus folks. Yes, so you told me. Well, you see, Bruce, the only difference between my being here at Fair Oaks and Lee being here is that my money is in a bank. And his comes from his dad's factory. Well, I may be balmy, but, but I don't quite see Well, it. you will. I just wanted to tell you those things because when the time comes to work it out, I may want to ask you to help me. Oh, surely. I'll be glad to do anything I can. Well, here's Mac's place. Come on in. Hello, Mac. Good afternoon, Mac. Oh, well, 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 lads. Bruce and Jerry, where's the third member of the triumvirate? Uh, the what? <laughs> Uh, the three little boys from school, huh? I mean, uh, Jerry, where is your illustrious roommate? Oh, Lee's back at Hayward Hall studying for an exam tomorrow. Oh, I, I understand the new. Well, lads, uh, what shall it be today? Well, I don't know whether I want anything or not, Mac. I'll decide in a minute. Uh, just as soon as I get through phoning Mr. Randall. Mr. Randall? Oh, well, he's come to town already, huh? For the midterm exercises. Well, let's fight. Whoa, us. whoa, hold your horses, Mac. No, oh, Mr. Randall isn't here yet. Hmm? But that's what I want to talk with him about. You, you mean you, you mean you're going to telephone him by long distance? That's right. Oh, Rosh, lad, you, you're going to be wasting your money like that. Oh, it isn't wasting it, Mac. You'll find out when you hear what I'm going to tell Mr. Randall. Oh, Jerry, you'll be the death of me yet. 
Uh, Mac. Aye, lad? I've never called by long distance before. Now, how do I do it? Well, uh, where is Mr. Randall, the new? He's with the circus in winter quarters at Melrose City. Uh, well, I'll put the call in for you, lad. Uh, what's the name of the circus again? Randall Brothers Greater Circus. Uh, I, I, I mind the new. Uh, this is 4832. I, I wish to place a call for Mr. Samuel Randall. Not Samuel, Mac. Just plain Sam. Uh, 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 Sam Randall. I, I, he's with the Randall Brothers Greater Circus in Melrose City. I, I, person to person. Mr. Jerry Dugan is making the call. I, I, that's correct. I, I, thank you. Uh, she'll call back in a moment or two, Jerry. Thanks, Mac. Well, Mac, Lee's just heard some pretty bad news. Bad news, Ross? What is it? Well, he thinks he's going to have to leave Fair Oaks. What? He thinks he has to leave. I thought you said... Yeah, I did, Bruce. I, I did say that Major Davis told him he would have to leave, definitely. But that's what I'm trying to fix. Oh, that is bad news, Jerry. Uh, what seems to be the matter? Well, something to do with the business his dad left him when he died. Oh, money. Yep, that's it. Oh, lost money. You mind the old saying, lads, how painful it is sometimes to keep money as well as to get it. Old Samuel Peep said that, and it's a very, very true... Oh, I, uh, there's a call, Jerry. Uh, you take it to noon. Thanks, Mac. Hello? Hello, Mr. Randall. What'd you say? Trouble? Oh, no, I'm not in any trouble. Uh, say, uh, Mr. Randall, you got my letter asking you to come up to Fair Oaks for the midterm exams, didn't you? Y yes, sir. Well, you're coming, aren't you? Oh, gee, that's well, Mr. Randall. Uh, well, uh, Mr. Randall, could you possibly make it up here before then? I mean, what, sir? Well, tomorrow afternoon, if you possibly could. You will? Ah, oh, gee, that's well. Uh, what'd you say? Oh, well, if it's all right with you, Mr. Randall, I'd rather talk to you about it when I see you. Okay? Thanks. Well, I guess that's about all. I'll sure be looking forward to seeing you again. Yes, sir. Yes, sir, I will. I'll meet you at the train tomorrow afternoon, then. All right. Goodbye. Well, so far, so good. Aye, aye, so far, so good. <laughs> and I think I'm beginning to see what this is all about. <laughs> I am beginning to understand. You are, huh? <laughs> I think I am, too. Well, okay, you two. But you mustn't say anything about it to leave. Ah, no, no, not a word. <laughs> 